Association have really stepped up in trying to, you know, get the legal community in the forefront of how to respond to this crisis, uh, situation, emergency. Some people may call it a terrorist attack uh, on, on, in this in this community. And he and along with Nancy Gallegos, uh, also from my office, Gracie Martinez and Tracy Willie have been very instrumental in trying to get this organized as you know, quickly, it, I think it's been a tremendous effort. And as a former uh, board member of the El Paso Bar Association, I know it's extremely important to have the bar involved in these activities to show that you know, we can make a difference in people's lives, especially all the legal issues that are gonna arise from this uh, situation. Uh, first of all, what is TRLA? Uh, just gonna do a brief overview about our program because Many people just call us legal aid. Some people still call us Texas Rural Legal Aid. Other people still call us the El Paso Legal Aid Society. Uh, what are we? We're a nonprofit law firm that provides free legal services to low-income individuals. That's what we do. We help people that are truly the poor. We don't take cases in one part people that can't afford it or that the bar has a substantial amount of people actually practice in that area. And we also help low-income organizations in the community, usually organizations that most other members are low-income individuals. And as I said before, well, the El Paso Legal Aid Society, which many of you probably knew as EPLIS, it merged with Texas Rural Legal Aid back in 2002, forming Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid. And this was a, a statewide effort. So TRLA merged with the programs that were legal aid programs in San Antonio, Austin, the Coastal Bend, and, and, and the River Grande Valley. So this shows you what is our service area. We're the third largest legal aid program in the nation and the largest in service area. I think one time I superimposed our, our map, our service area, on Europe and then Basel somewhere like in Normandy and the Rio Grande Valley is like somewhere like in Lower Italy. So we're like a large program and we have a lot of urban areas but the majority of our service area is rural counties and also the majority of our service area includes some of the poorest counties in the United States. So there's a tremendous need for legal services here. For example, in our, in our office, last year we got about 3,000 applications for services. Uh, and we only could take probably five to 600 in various forms of representation. So the need is tremendous. And that's something to look out for in this situation that there's gonna be a lot of people that are indigent, low income that are going to seek out legal services, not only from TRLA, but also from the bar, just because this is a very poor community. Again, going back, what, what is TRLA? We have 120 attorneys and 14 offices uh, throughout the state of Texas. And, and, and this is why we bring a certain expertise in disasters, unfortunately, because we have many offices in the coastal band area of Texas. So it seems every year there's a hurricane hitting the, uh, those areas, and due to the hurricanes, which is a natural disaster, there's issues that we, in front of housing issues, employment issues, just getting any sort of government assistance. Uh, even though I'm in El Paso, I've done FEMA applications and appeals from cases down due to the hurricanes, and even some of the, I think a couple years ago, there's like big wall towers around in Travis County. So. And because we have so many attorneys, we are able to put resources where it's needed. So in this situation, we've had a lot of assistance from attorneys in other offices that may have an expertise that we don't have to help us in these cases. For example, the upcoming speaker, uh, Brittany, who, who her uh, job solely deals with disaster assistance. Again, our major source of funding is the Texas Access to Justice Foundation and they're getting funded by all the IOTA accounts that you have. So not only do we get it, get the IOTA accounts, a lot of legal nonprofits also get it. We also get a lot of grants from like the state due to veterans issues. We get grants for sexual uh, assistance, sexual assault assistance, and we also get uh, money from the Legal Services Corporation, which is a, a quasi-governmental agency that provides a lot of funding for legal aid programs. And the Legal Services Corporation also puts a lot of restrictions on what we can and can't do. And this is something that's gonna be important in, in getting the private bar to help in some cases. And finally, we get money from private donations, uh, attorney's fees. Now we're able to collect attorney's fee in cases up to like four years ago. Before that, we weren't able to collect attorney's fees, which sometimes 
did not help in, in so many cases just because the other side knew that we couldn't run up the cost on it. And side trade awards. So, as I alluded before, since we have so many attorneys with so many offices, we're organized in practice areas groups. So we have a family uh, justice team, economic, social justice, individual rights, labor and employment, housing, public benefits, EI intake. And many of the practice areas we do are practice areas that the private bar doesn't take because there's really no, they can't generate income for their businesses because you know there's no attorney's fee guarantee and the vast majority of the, the clients may be indigent. Classic example is public benefit appeals. Helping somebody that got denied by FEMA, the private bar usually is not gonna take that case. Usually uh, evictions for somebody that's getting sued by apartment complex Again, many of the private bar doesn't take it. So usually we focus on cases where the, the people are low income, but the private bar is not suited to take those cases just because they're not regenerating uh, cases. For example, my primary practice area is helping employment law with migrant farmers. And there's probably like 30 of us that do that nationwide, and there's no attorney fee provisions, and when we surrender the Agricultural Workers Protection Act, so then we get federal funding designed to help that special community because the private bar is unable to help them because we acknowledge, you know, if you're a solo practitioner or how law firm, you have to pay your overhead, you have to pay your, your, your staff. And even though you want to help, you know, you have to uh, look out for your, your ability to, you know, sustain your, your, your income. What are we doing here is that with, due to this recent disaster and just disasters in general, we have this disaster hotline which is 866-757-1570, and it's answered by paralegals or attorneys that are specialized in disaster type intakes. Due to, again, these, um, the nature of our service area that we encounter many natural disasters, our charity within, within charity we have a disaster assistance team that just specializes in reacting to these types of situations. And we usually have a general intake number, but because that, income, that general intake number gets a lot of call volumes, and that's, so we decide to like just use this number for the intake so that we can guarantee a person is going to get their phone call answered and we're going to try to get back to you. Another thing we're also doing is in-person intakes uh, at our office, which is located at 1331 Texas, just off of downtown. I think uh, the, the California restaurant's right across the street from us, and that's our, our localization. So here, uh, we're doing intakes on anybody that comes in, re regardless of income, regardless of, of uh, eligibility status. Because if we aren't able to help them, we want, with collaboration with the Boston Association, try to place those cases with a private bar and ensure that they actually get some sort of assistance. Or also, we're working with community partners to also try to use the resource from the community to place uh, cases. It could be not a legal case, it could be simply that they just want to talk to a counselor. So we're, we're gearing up to do that, and we've done that in years. So going back just to the income qualifications, because sometimes uh, with the private bar, it's, it's feel sometimes people don't realize how truly poor the people we represent. In order to qualify for services, they have to be 125% of poverty level. So if you're a, a person of one, you, can, you cannot make more than $15,000. If you're like a family of four, $32,000, which understandable, a lot of people in El Paso fall under their guidelines uh, in, in that situation. But usually these are the truly injured and for example, as, as a farmer law attorney, sometimes I have clients that maybe work make like six thousand dollars a year because their entire employment season is right now where they're harvesting the, the hash green chili that is sold at Whole Foods uh, for a very flavor price. So we are representing the truly indigent. And many times they're indigent just because if for in the, for example the family law context is because they left the husband and the husband is the one that was the breadwinner and now they're work they're at a shelter. And Continuing on, uh, with TRLA, we only can represent people that are good citizens, live with permanent residents, and in this situation, people that may qualify for a, uh, a U visa, which is the victims of, uh, of crime. So I think that's something that I think the immigration bar is probably going to be getting the word out that many of these people are, can qualify for a, traffic, uh, a vic crime victim visa because of what happened to them, especially since in this community, many of the victims were, had local crossing cards. They were just coming to Walmart to just shop and they have no intention of, of residing here, but maybe because of the situation now, they may be having to come here more often or maybe go somewhere else to get more specialized treatment. And how can Charlie help? Big thing is 
So these are the practice areas that we're focusing on. They're not exclusive. And also, if one is, if we get a, a, a large number of these cases, or they don't qualify, we plan to refer them out. Again, it could be it's the probate establishing areas like in the states of the deceased to access benefits and bank accounts. We already received those cases that a client is trying to access the bank account that's under maybe the, the victim's name. Uh, applying for survivor or disability benefits from the Social Security Administration. Applying for and appealing the denial from unemployment benefits. Again, something we've already encountered with, with, with employees of Walmart that are trying to discover what are their rights in relating to going back to work as soon as possible or because they might still have uh, PTSD from the incident. Uh, negotiating with mortgage companies and landlords, <coughs> and that's something one of my colleagues is going to speak uh, further on. Locating and assisting with relation of vehicles. There's still some vehicles that are still there at the Walmart or have been towed. And maybe it's because the, they, the person can't pick up the car because they can't show ownership. Uh, and, the, and the big one applying for and appealing denials that find victims' compensation benefits and other benefits. That's one of the big things that's happening here is you can immediately apply for those benefits, but many people could be considered victims of the situation, but they don't know what the process is to get the compensation, which is not only non, not including monetary, but it could be helping pay for counseling services. And, and also re resolving the problems with enrollment of children in school because of changing the household compositions. Typically, around this time, we get a lot of grandparents trying to enroll their kids in school, but the, the school said, like, no, where, where's mom and dad? And we anticipate situations now with that maybe the, the victim is gone and the parent is gone, and now the kids are trying to, the, whoever is the caretaker, kid care in situations, trying to enroll the kids in school, and they might not be able to enroll them in school because they want some sort of evidence that they actually are the caretakers. And again, knowledge of disaster related issues and assistance, again. So what has been Terrell's involvement so far? We've, we've had staff at the, the El Paso Assistance Center when it was still open, and we intend to have staff at the El Paso Resiliency Center, which uh, is going to be forthcoming open. We don't have a, a, they haven't told us where that center is going to be there, but they anticipate it's going to be there, there for a couple of years, helping victims of the disaster. We've had meetings with the Mexican Consulate about public benefits issues, and the, another, a big issue that has been been within the, the uh, organization is that whether Mexican citizens can qualify for prime victims compensation, which is, at this point, they can't because they're not considered to be Texas residents. Also, media outreach, uh, media outreach on legal issues. We've been on media saying that we're here to help, just to get the word out, because we anticipate uh, in the clients that we've talked to so far that have come to us, we have, uh, I think, eight people so far. They're barely coming up for air because they're still dealing with the trauma of arranging the funeral expenses, and now, okay, how do I pay the rent? So we're trying to get the, 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 the information out and, found, and funding foundation steering committees. We're working the foundations to try to do the process of how the money's going to be distributed. Community partners like the El Paso Bar Association on it. And how can the private help, bar help? Again, as Dan alluded, that many of these cases, they might not qualify for services because of the income. So we're trying to generate a list as well so we can refer cases to the private bar because at this point we're not turning anybody away. If they come to us, we'll do an intake. And if they don't qualify for whatever reason, we want to be proactive in giving them help and placing them with people in the, in the private bar. Whether it be the list that uh, Dan is compiling or other lists, we just want them to be able to get help on it. Also, just direct pro bono referrals. I know the, many of the, the specialty bars have agreed to like take some of these cases for free. Well, we want to be able to talk to you and see who's a representative so we can, we can uh, send those cases. Again, referral list, and then, as Dan said, like clinics. This is an issue that's going to happen, that's going to be around for a long time. And we anticipate there's going to be a, a sudden interest in, in doing wills and probate because a lot of people, you know, died without wills, and now who has the custody of the kid. Uh, also disaster resistance and just support decision making. I guess a lot of people maybe have passed away without saying do not persist it here or so forth. So another thing too is that just a little pitch that we actually do pro bono work. You can actually apply for uh, a tax break <coughs> from the franchise tax. Uh, many private attorneys aren't aware of this, that you can actually get a tax break for, for helping people for free. And this is the, it's under the Texas Administrative Code, Title 34. 
uh, and and if you want a more specific site to that, I can I can send you that information. And again, my name is Beth Lamesta. I'm here to help. Our organization is here to help. If you have any questions, again, if you have a current client and maybe you want to have a public business question, something like that, please feel free to contact me. That's my direct extension. That's my email. And again, we're we're here to help. Questions? Thank you. Uh, one other thing, there's going to uh, one of our attorneys, Bernadette Segura, is going to speak uh, briefly a little bit before Veronica Arrojado just about a public benefits issue because it's something that has recently has popped up and we just want to get the word out about some of those issues. Thank you. And now I'm going to.